how could we compute the size? Well, let's do that on a tree and then see how this code is doing exactly that. You could try to start at the top and compute the size of the tree, count all of the nodes and everything and then compute the size of the tree that way. That doesn't seem very practical though, because afterwards I'm gonna to have to compute the size of all this stuff and then afterwards I'm gonna to have to compute the size of all this stuff. So why not start at the bottom and work our way up? This works very naturally with recursion because we will go until we find nowhere else to go and then we compute the size there. So suppose I started my computation at all the leaf nodes. Those sizes are easy. The size of the tree rooted at three is one and the same for six and the same for 13 and 19 and 29 and 35 and 40 because there are no nodes below those. Then for everything above them, I just need to add up all of the nodes below. So for the node two, well, I have one leaf and myself, so node two as size two. Node six, I got some more work to do. 13 and 19, those go to three because I, node 15 has two children. 29 and 35, we have three, and over there we have more work to do. So let's actually do this in a more practical way. I can figure out the size of 22, which is four, the size of nine, which is five, the size of eight, which is one plus five plus one, that's seven. Then four is two plus seven plus one, that's 10. Going back over to the right, we have four for the size of this node, five for the size of that node, and seven for the size of that node, making the total tree of size 18. What if we wanted to find the number of nodes greater than or equal to six? How can we do this very efficiently? If I start at the root, I never need to search over here because I already know every single one of those nodes is greater than or equal to 25 and therefore greater than or equal to six. So all of these nodes on the right are already guaranteed to be counted. So for sure I have all seven of those nodes. Plus I can go to the left. Going to the left, I find node four that is not greater than or equal to six. I go to the right. And then I find eight, eight is greater than or equal to six, so I need to add that. And then everything in eight's right subtree must be counted as well because they're greater than or equal to eight and eight is greater than or equal to six. So I add in all five of those and then I need to check to the left. And over there, I am going to find six, which is also within my acceptable range. And now we have 14 nodes. And notice I only had to really go down one, two, three different branches of the tree. So this is really convenient and seems to have improved our runtime as opposed to having to go over into these trees and count everything that's happening and that just seems like a whole ordeal. So let's see how we implement that. Here's our bad implementation and we will fix it with our new idea. So we, what we would normally do is if we find a value that is greater than or equal to k, we would need to go into the right subtree and find out how many values were over there. So instead of going into the right subtree, why not just know, because we've stored it already, the size of the right subtree? Because of the transitivity of our greater than or equal to operation, we can guarantee that every value over there is going to be counted. And now there's no more recursion here, which is going to be very good for our runtime. And if we notice during this first if statement, I am always going to go one direction. And if I go into the else statement, I'm always going to just one direction. Therefore, like we've seen many, many times, when we have a while loop or something where we are making a single decision as to which way to descend, it's going to be in theta of h. So we could similarly implement a way to count the number of things less than or equal to a value. We have that down here. Let's quickly fix that for you guys. This should be x dot left dot size to be our smarter implementation that now uses size. Here we have a somewhat clever implementation of this idea. So rather than immediately jump into the code, let's try and see what we're doing. We're going to first understand what this while loop does, and then we're gonna to try to use that idea to help us. This while loop, the very first loop here, is going to try to find any value in the tree in the range of values I'm interested in. So let's try and do that in an example up above. Here we have a tree, and we already have all the sizes in this tree computed. So, if we wanted to find, for example, all of the values between six and 24, if we want to find how many values that is, I'm going to start by trying to find a value that is in that range. 
to find a value that is in that range, well, 25 isn't, so I'm going to have to go to the left. After, after going to the left, 10, 4 still isn't, so I have to go to the right. And now, once I am at a value within the range, all I need to determine is how many values to the right are less than or equal to 24, and how many values on the left are greater than or equal to 6. Because everything over here is already greater than or equal to 6, all I need to do is find out which of them are also less than or equal to 24. Because I found a value within the range already. Similarly, everything on the left subtree here is guaranteed to be less than or equal to 24, and therefore I just need to find out which ones are also greater than or equal to 6. So if we scroll down to our code, step 1 is find a value in the range of values, and then we're going to find out how many values on the left are greater than or equal to the min, and how many values on the right are less than or equal to the max. And we're going to add those up. And conveniently, the runtime of this code is theta of h. The runtime of that method is theta of h. This while loop is just ascending the tree either to the left or to the right only one at a time, so it's also in theta of h. So the whole algorithm all together is theta of h. Very convenient. So this is how we could implement this using the size to save us a lot of runtime. Notice we don't care how many values are in the range anymore, and we've improved our runtime substantially by doing this.